All right, we are back and we are here. We are here and this is all about roadmap. Um, roadmap will be something that we'll be doing until we are finished with the map that we are on. So with this roadmap, let's go to it. We're gonna go to front end. We were wanna go to front end. Uh, this is within full stack development and this is front end development and we're gonna go to the internet and we're gonna learn something. You're gonna learn, okay, first the internet. Uh, internet. The internet is a global network of computers connected to each other, which communicate through a standardized set of protocols. Okay. If you guys are familiar with the internet, you understand the internet has a set of protocols. We will get to that later. Visit the following resources to learn more. So we're going to click on how does the internet work. We're going to really try to read all the articles and um, some of the videos that they have. We might give like a, uh, a summary and uh, we may link this to some type of blog post or something like that, but we'll get into the details about that later. Let's go ahead and read how does the internet work. Now, this is on cs.fyi, and we are talking about distributed systems. Okay, it says, how does the internet work? Uh, last updated February 16, 2023. As a developer, it is important to have a solid understanding of what the internet is and how it works. It is the foundation, so it is the foundation, upon which most modern software applications are built. In order to build effective, secure, and scalable applications and services, you need to have a solid understanding of how the internet works and how to leverage its power and connectivity. In this article, we will cover the basics of internet, including what it is, how it works, some basic concepts, terminology, and some common protocols that are used to build applications and services on the internet. Now, this seems as if this is the table of content, so we're going to read Introdu introduction to the internet, how the internet works, an overview, basic concepts and terminology, the role of protocols in the internet, understanding IP addresses and domain names, introduction to HTTP and HTTPS, building applications with TCP slash IP, securing internet communication with SSL slash TLS, the future emerging trends and technologies. And then we have the conclusion at the end. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's get started. All right. Introduction to the Internet. Before we learn what the Internet is, we need to understand what a network is. A network is a group of computers or other devices which are connected to each other. For example, you are at home. Uh, so you at your home might have a network of computers and devices. Your friend living next door might have a similar network of devices. Their neighbor might have a similar network of devices. All these networks when connected together from the Internet. Um, so all these networks when connected together from the internet, the internet is a network of networks. Oof, the internet is a network of networks. Okay. The internet was developed in the late 1960s. Yes. by the United States department of defense as a means of creating the centralized communication network that could withstand a nuclear attack over the years. It has evolved into a complex and sophisticated network that spans the globe. Today, the internet is a central part of modern life, <laughs> is it not? We all have a phone and we all are connected watching this video right now, reading along with it. So let's continue. Used by billions of people around the world to access information, communicate with friends and family, conduct business, and much more. Do we not conduct business? The internet, man, is used to conduct business all around the globe, all around the world, the whole world wide web, right? The web of information that we are all conducting business up, talking to family and friends and access and a whole bunch of information and much more right as a developer it is essential to have a solid understanding of how the internet works and the various technologies and protocols that underpin it let's look at this how the internet works an overview at a high level the internet works by connecting devices and computer systems together using a set of standardized protocols these protocols define how information is exchanged between devices and ensure that that data is transmitted reliably and securely. The core of the internet is a global network of interconnected routers, which are responsible for directing traffic between different devices and systems. When you send data over the internet, it is broken up into small packets that are sent from your device to a router. The router examines the packet and forwards it to the next router. In the path towards its destination, this process continues until the packet reaches its final destination. To ensure that packets are sent and received correctly, the internet uses a variety of protocols, including the internet protocol, IP, and the transmission control protocol, TCP. IP is responsible for routing packets. Ooh. So let's go back. Let's go back. Let's really look at this. 
This says to ensure that packets, or remember packets, are sent and received correctly, the internet uses a variety of what protocols, so packets and protocols, including the internet protocol, uh -oh, IP, and the transmission control protocol, so TCP, so we got IP and TCP. Okay, so we got internet protocol, and remember, to ensure that packets are sent and received correctly, the internet uses a variety of protocols. So these protocols are used to what? To ensure that the packets are sent and received correctly. Now that we have a good, a greater look on that or a uh, better look on that, let's go and continue to read. IP is responsible for routing packets to their correct destination. Okay, so IP is responsible for routing packets to their correct destination. So IP and destination. So Internet pro Protocol is responsible for routing packets. So look at that, routing packets to their correct destination. While TCP ensures that packets are transmitted reliably and in the correct order. So TCP is about order. So it puts things in order. IP just makes sure it gets to where it's supposed to go. All right. Again, let's say that again. TCP is about order. IP is about making sure that the packets are routing to their correct destination. Okay, let's go. In addition to these core protocols, there are a wide range of other technologies and protocols that are used to enable communication and data exchange over the internet, including the domain name system, DNS, the hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, and the secure lockets layer, transport layer, security, SSL, TLS protocol. As a developer, it is important to have a solid understanding of how these different technology and protocols work together to enable communication and data exchange over the internet. So you see this enable communication, talking with our family and friends, right? And data exchange over the internet. So access and information in conducting business, right? Transactions, data exchange, transactions, okay? Over the internet, basic concepts and terminology. So we're getting ready to talk about concepts and terminology, the basics. To understand the internet, it is important to be familiar with some basic concepts and terminology. Here are some key terms and concepts to be aware of. What we just talked about, packet. Okay, so look at this. Packet, a small unit of data that is transmitted over the internet. Router, a device that directs packets of data between different networks. IP address, a unique identifier assigned to each device on a network used to route data to the correct destination. Domain name, a human readable name that is used to identify a website such as Google, Google.com. So domain name, a human readable name that is used to identify a website such as Google.com. DNS, the domain name system is responsible for translating domain names into IP addresses. So DNS IP addresses, DNS IP addresses, domain name, human readable. Okay, so just kind of remember it like that. Remember, we are up here to read, to study. We're reading and studying together. So this is what this is about. Um, eventually, man, I'm, hey, look, if y'all want to buy me a snack, you guys can. I'll put the link in my bio. But if you want to, you can buy me a snack or you can just keep reading along and listening because we're going to get this done regardless. But if you want to and you want to throw me some good energy or whatever it is that you're doing uh, or want to give or show some type of appreciation for me doing this, I will start to do like um, I'll probably do like a link <clears throat> that sends you to my shopping list or something like that. And it'll be able to get sent to me as a gift. So let's go here and it'll be like a yeah a gift and a donation. So let's go. HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol is used to transfer data between a client such as a web browser and a server such as a website. HTTPS, an encrypted version of HTTP that is used to provide secure communication between a client and server. SSL, TLS, the secure sockets layer and transport layer security protocols are used to provide secure communication over the Internet. And look at that. Um, now, now let's go back up to HTTP and HTTPS. So what are the differences? And before we get into SSL and TLS, TLS, HTTP, HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol is used to transfer data between a client, such as a web browser and a server, such as a website. So, okay. So HTTP transfer data client, which is a web browser server, which is something like a website. Okay, so we're transferring what? Data. Remember what data was? Okay. Um, okay. Remember what packets are? So packets on. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to stay focused with that. The hypertext transfer protocol is used to transfer data between a client. So think about this. 
client web browser server website okay so client is a web browser server is a website okay so that's how they want us to see it this is how we're studying it um and we're going to go to the next one because this one only talks about that but it doesn't talk about what comes next which https right the s okay so i'm about security so an encrypted version of http that is used to provide secure communication between a client and server so it's talking about encryption again so we're talking about cryptology okay so we all know what happens when you encrypt things right if we don't we will definitely find out in the next soon to come upcoming readings about encryption right because this is a part of what we do as developers we have to understand certain things just in case we're not able to find somebody to hire at that point in time so we're always reading updating our information just as is the information in the world is always updating and maybe changing due to certain causes right so http is encrypted right it provides secure communication between a client and a server okay ssl tls now we're finally here and we're going to talk about the last one right this is the last uh terminology that they want us to be familiar with the security sockets layer and transport layer security protocols are used to provide secure communication over the internet <clears throat> okay this is over the whole internet the internet okay remember the internet is a network of networks right a system of computers right connected to each other um the secure sockets layer and transport layer security pro protocols are used to provide secure communication over the internet all right mm -hmm. understanding these basic concepts and terms is essential for working with the internet and developing internet-based application applications and services mm -hmm. the role of protocols and in internet protocols play a critical role in enabling communication that exchange over the internet a protocol is a set of rules and standards that define how information is exchanged between devices and systems there are many different protocols used in internet communication including the internet protocol the ip uh oh what was the ip for again you guys remember i know i don't so i'm gonna do it go look back at my notes i am oh go hold on <laughs> ip address no we're looking for internet protocol we're not looking for ip address we're looking for internet protocol like the ip tcp let's find this thing we just had this okay we're gonna look, look at the ip tool it says to ensure that packets are sent and received correctly the internet uses a variety of protocols including the internet protocol the ip so remember to ensure that packets are sent and received correctly the internet uses a variety of protocols including the ip the internet protocol okay remember ip is responsible for what routing packets to the what correct destination so when it talks about down here remember hold on, let's look at this one because i know it's going to come up so ip is responsible for destination tcp is responsible for what the order of things the correct order so let's go back down and read this so we make sure we understand everything that we're reading the role of protocols in the internet okay protocols play a critical role in enabling communication that exchange over the internet right ip what Make sure everything gets sent and received to what the correct destination. All right, now that we remember that, let's keep going. A protocol, now look, look at this. A protocol is a set of rules and standards that define how information is exchanged between devices and systems. So now we have protocols being a set of rules, um, like the rules you follow every day. Red light, green light, yellow light, all right? Blue lights. So, um, and I'm going to keep it real. We don't like the blue lights, Okay. And we want to stay away from blue lights. So look, guess what? There's a set of rules and standards that define how information is exchanged between devices and systems. All right. There are many different protocols used in internet communication, including the internet protocol IP, the transmission control protocol. Uh oh, remember the TCP? What does the TCP do again? Let's think about what it does. TCP, which is transmission control protocol. What does that do? Let's go back up. No worries. It ensures the packets are transmitted reliably and in correct order. So remember, it's the order. All right. Let's go back up. Always double check, um, especially when we're first learning. We want to get this thing correct all the way through. So we don't really truly have to really go back to this unless we really want to and we want to research and take notes and jot down uh, important words to define that we don't know. And, you know, the rest is, is history. So let's keep it going. Again, there are many different protocols used in the Internet and in Internet communication including the internet protocol IP, the transmission control protocol TCP, the user diagram protocol UDP, the domain the domain name system DNS, and many others. IP is responsible for routing packets of data to their correct destination, while TCP and UDP ensure that, that packets are transmitted reliably and 
efficiently. DNS is used to translate domain names into IP addresses, and HTTP is used to transfer data between clients and servers. One of the key benefits of using standardized protocols is that they allow devices and systems from different manufacturers and vendors to communicate with each other seamlessly. For example, a web browser developed by one company can communicate with a web, web server developed by another company, as long as they both adhere to the HTTP protocol. As a developer, it's important to understand the various protocols used in internet communication and how they work together to, to enable the transfer of data and information over the internet. Understanding IP addresses and domain names. All right, so we're done with the last three. So we're going to finish this out with this. Not finish it out, but we're going to finish this section and go to the next section until we're done with the whole thing. So understanding IP addresses and domain names. IP addresses and domain names are both important concepts to understand when working with the internet. Wow, so IP addresses and domain names are both important concepts to understand when working with the internet. Remember domain names is a human readable. Remember, human readable. Remember IP addresses is, is what? Let's go back up. What is the IP address? A unique identifier assigned to each device on the network used to route data to the correct destination because it's an internet, it's an internet protocol, right? But the address is the identifiers and it's a unique identifier because everybody probably has to have a different one. <clears throat> so let's see, a unique identifier assigned to each device on the network. So to each device, it has a, a unique address um, that it identifies itself with. All right, used to route data to the correct destination. Okay, that's what the IP is about. Remember, TCP is about the order. IP is about the making sure everything's sent and received to the correct destination. All right, let's go back down, guys. IP address, again, IP address and domain names are important concepts to understand when working with the internet. An IP address is a unique identifier assigned to each device on the network. It's used to route data to the correct destination, ensuring that information is sent to the intended recipient. IP addresses are typically represented as a series of of four numbers separated by periods such as 192.168.1.1 .1. domain names on the other hand are human readable names used to identify websites and other internet resources they're typically composed of two or more parts separated by periods for example google.com is a domain name domain names are translated into ip addresses using the domain name system dns DNS is a critical part of the internet infrastructure responsible for translating domain names into IP addresses. When you enter a domain name into your web browser, your computer sends a DNS query to a DNA server, which returns the corresponding IP address. Your computer, when, your computer then uses that IP address to connect to the website or other resources resource you requested. Okay. Take a breather. All right, let's go. <laughs> Introduction to HTTP and HTTPS. All right, remember HTTP, HTTPS, secure encryption. All right, it stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. All right, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and HTTPS, H Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, are two of the most commonly used protocols in internet-based applications and services. Hypertext Transmission Oh, sorry, hypertext transmission protocol uh, is the protocol used to transfer data between a client, such as a web browser, again, client web browser and what server website, and a server such as a website. When you visit a website, your oh, let me see, your web browser sends an HTTP request to the server asking for the web page or other resource you've requested. The server then sends an HTTP response back to the client. Containing the requested data, HTTPS is a more secure version of HTTP, which encrypts the data being transmitted between the client and server using SSL and TLS, Secure Sockets Layer Transport Layer Security Encryption. This, provide, this provides an additional layer of security helping to protect sensitive information such as login credentials, payment information, and other personal data. Okay, good. When you visit a website that uses HTTPS, your browser will display a padlock icon in the address bar, indicating that the connection is secure. You may also see the letters HTTPS at the beginning of the website address, rather than HTTP. All right, now look at this. Let's go back. 
because we really need to know this about the HTTP and HTTPS. It says this provides an additional layer. So this is on HTTP. Let's just reread the whole block. HTTP is a more secure version. Oh, sorry. No, no. We want to read. Uh, okay. What do we want to read first? Let's reread this because I really want to get to the bottom of this. It says when you visit a website up here, HTTP, when you visit a website, your web browser sends HTTP requests to the server asking for the web page or other resource you requested. The server then sends an HTTP response back to the client containing the requested data. HTTPS is a more secured version of HTTP, which encrypts. Remember what happens when you encrypt something? Uh, only people that can see it is the person that is requesting the information and the, the place where the information is being requested. Uh, instead of looking like, hello, how are you doing? It's going to look like a bunch of numbers, right? To somebody else on the outside trying to... Uh, Somebody else on the outside with another device trying to basically look at what you guys are talking about. So it's encrypted. Encrypts the data being transmitted between the client and server using SSL, TLS, secure sockets layer, transport layer, security, encryption. All right, now this is what we want to focus on. This provides an additional layer of security, helping to protect sensitive information such as login credentials, payment information, and other personal data. Wow, okay, now we get it. When you visit a website that uses HTTPS, your web browser will display a padlock icon in the address bar, indicating that the connection is secure. You, you may also see the letters HTTPS at the beginning of the website address rather than HTTP. Building applications with TCP slash IP, TCP slash IP transmission control protocol slash internet protocol is the underlying communication protocol used by most internet-based applications and services. It provides a reliable ordered and error check delivery of data between applications running on a different on different devices. So remember TCP slash IP. Remember what was, I, what was TCP for? Does anybody remember? If you can, just acknowledge it within your own self. And then IP was, you know that? Remember that one? All right, so acknowledge that within your own self, okay? So we got TCP. Let me get it again. Let me let me take a shot at it and then we're gonna go back up and see if I'm correct. So we have TCP, which is transmission control protocol. And that one was definitely for making sure that everything was in order. And the IP was just making sure that everything goes to the correct place or the right destination, right? Making sure that the packets, you know, the remember the packets is a unit of data. Um in the, the packets within uh, the packets that the IP um, is helping to make sure it gets sent and received to its correct destination. Uh, the packets is really uh, what's making sure is being sent and received to the right, uh, to the right destination. Okay, work with me because I'm making sure that I am reciting this. All right, and TCP will just put in everything in order. Remember that. So, building applications with TCP slash IP. So, this is what we're talking about. TCP IP, remember, Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol, is the underlying communication protocol used by most internet-based applications and services. It provides a reliable, ordered, and error check delivery of data between applications running on different devices. When building applications with TCP slash IP, there are a few concepts to understand. All right, what are they? Ports. Uh oh, some new words. All right, guys, let's get familiar with these words when it comes to TCP and IP. So we have ports. Ports are used to identify the application or service running on a device. Each application or service is assigned a unique port number, allowing data to be sent to the correct destination. Now we have sockets. A socket is a combination of an IP address and a port number, representing a specific endpoint for communication. Sockets are used to establish connections between devices and transfer data between applications. Connections. A connection is established between two sockets when two devices want to communicate with each other. During the connection establishment process, devices negotiate various parameters such as the maximum segment size and window size, which determine how data will be transmitted over the connection. Data transfer. Once a connection is established, data can be transferred between the applications running on each device. Data is typically transmitted in segments, which, with each segment containing a sequence number, containing a sequence number and other metadata to ensure reliable delivery. 
When building applications with TCP slash IP, you'll need to ensure that your application is designed to work with the appropriate ports, sockets, and connections. You also need to be familiar with the various protocols and standards that are commonly used with TCP slash IP, such as HTTP, FTP, which means file transfer protocol, and SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol. Understanding these concepts and protocols is essential for building effective, scalable, and secure internet-based applications and services. Now, look at these. You got ports, sockets, connections, and data transfer. Okay, just kind of remember those um, as they will be talked about in the future because we're talking about the internet and they're going to keep um, reinforcing it in our minds i'm sure and if not we can reinforce it right here because this is what this channel is all about it's about learning educating ourselves and growing to be better developers and right now remember we're in full stack front end developer so we're front end and we're learning about what the internet is and how does the internet work okay so we need to make sure that we when we leave this we really know how the internet works right so let's go back. Let's look at ports. So, so let's look, really look at why we're learning these and what they relate to. So we see TCP IP, right? So when building applications with TCP IP, there are a few key concepts to understand. Now let's really elaborate on this <clears throat> and just make sure that we are getting the information and not just reading it and, and, and counting that as something read and rushing through it. No, sit down and take our times, understand how valuable doing this is. And once you understand how valuable doing this is, you understand how valuable what I'm doing uh, and how important it is to not only me, but to the people um, that I will be working with, uh, contracting with, whatever it is that you're doing, projects, uh, whether you're doing it by yourself or with somebody else. We want to make sure that everybody has um, what they need when it comes to the uh, understanding part of this thing, right? So ports. Ports are used to identify the application or service running on a device. So ports identify the application or service okay on a device each application or service is assigned a unique port number so now we got unique port numbers okay remember how the ip addresses had unique identifiers okay now the ports have are assigned a unique port number okay for application and service so each application or service is assigned a unique port number so unique port numbers are for applications or services or service um, all right, allowing data to be sent to the correct destination. Now, remember, what allows the data to be sent to the correct destination? The IP, right? And the TCP does what? Put everything in order. So we're still somewhere near the IP when it talks about correct destination. So this is why we want to go back over this and look at this the way that we're doing it. So we want to understand exactly it is what we're reading. Okay, so we're not just reading on and not understanding or getting this. All right. So ports. Ports are used to identify the application or service running on a device. Each application or service is assigned a unique port number, allowing data to be sent to the correct destination. Okay, we're going to go to the next one. <clears throat> Sockets. A socket is a combination of an IP address and a port number. So now we have IP address and port numbers. So a sockets are a combination, right? Whenever you combine something, you you bring it together close to one another, right? You combine them, they're, they're one now. These two are one, and they mean what? So sockets, a socket is a combination of an IP address and a port number, okay, representing a specific endpoint for communication. So now we're talking about sockets being an endpoint for communication. So whenever, whenever you see sockets, you want to also see how the IP address and port number are combined, but you also want to understand it's an endpoint for communication, all right? Sockets are used to establish connections between devices, so establishing connections. So remember, this again is representing a specific endpoint for communication, an endpoint for communication. Sockets are used to establish connections between devices and transfer data between applications. Sockets are used to establish connections, establish connections between devices, transfer data between applications. We're going to go to the next one. Let that sit in your brain. We're going to go to this one, and we're going to go to connections. A connection is established between two sockets. So a connection is established between two sockets when two devices want to communicate with each other. During the connection establishment process, the devices negotiate various parameters, such as the maximum segment size and window size, which determine how data will be transmitted over the connection. Okay, great, great, great. We're going to reread that. 
Connections. A connection is established between two sockets. Remember, sockets is the endpoint for communication. It is also um, a combination of IP address and a port number. Okay? So remember that. Remember those two things about sockets. Um, it's a combination of, of two things, IP address and port numbers. And it also is a, it's an endpoint for communication. Okay, so a connection is established between two sockets. This is, we're talking about connections still. A connection is established between two sockets when two devices want to communicate with each other. During the connection establishment process, the devices negotiate various parameters such as the maximum segment size and window size, which determine how data will be transmitted over the internet. I mean, over the connection, sorry. Which determine how data will be transmitted over the connection, over the connection, okay? So during, uh, let's read it again. During the connection establishment process, the devices negotiate, <clears throat> so these devices are what negotiating, various parameters such as the maximum segment size. Okay, now we got maximum segment size and window size, which determine how data would be transmitted over the connection. All right, data transfer. Once the connection is established, data can be transferred between the applications running on each device. Okay. Data transfer. Data can be transferred between the applications when on each device. All right, now look at here. Data is typically transmitted in segments. In segments, let's use context clues. Data is typically transmitted in segments, which uh, with each segment containing a sequence number. Oh, now we got sequence number. What is that? And other metadata to ensure reliable delivery. All right, let's keep going. When building applications with TCP slash IP, you need to ensure that your application is designed to work with the appropriate ports, sockets, and connections. You also need to be familiar with the various protocols and standards that are commonly used with TCP slash IP, such as HTTP, FTP, File Transfer Protocol, and SMTP, Simple, um, simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So we got SMTP which is simple mail transfer protocol. I didn't tell us that earlier. It just did it. So we're paying attention to these, um, these acronyms and the way that they, they're using them. Understanding these concepts and protocols is essential for building effective, scalable, and secure internet-based application and services. Cool. All right, secure, securing internet communication with SSL and TLS. TLS. As we discussed earlier, SSL and Slash TLS is a protocol used to encrypt data being transmitted over the internet. Mm. It is commonly used to provide secure connections for applications such as web browsers, email clients, and file transfer programs. When using SSL, the when using SSL slash TLS to secure internet communication, there are a few key concepts to understand. Uh oh, some more. Hey, some more vocabulary to uh, become familiarized with. And it's certificates, handshake, and encryption. So let's let's slow down and let's really look at what is asked, what is saying. When using SSL slash TLS to secure internet communication, there are a few key concepts to understand. So these are concepts we need to understand, right? And then you match these concepts to the words. All right. So let's read the word and the definition of the word. All right. And remember, this definition is basically the key concepts. Certificates, SSL, TLS, certificates are used to establish trust between the client and server. All right, so we got SSL, uh, TLS certificates. All right, and these are used to establish trust between the client and server. They contain information about the identity of the server and are signed by a trusted third party, a certificate authority, to verify their authenticity. Handshake. During the SSL slash TLS handshake process, the client and server exchange information to negotiate the encryption algorithm and other parameters for the secure connection. All right, you hear that? Handshake. During the SSL slash TLS handshake process, the client and server exchange information. So handshake. Client and server exchange information to negotiate the encryption algorithm. So this is what's in handshaking. Client and server exchange negotiating 
in the encryption algorithm and other parameters for the secure connection. So we have to remember client and server exchange information during a handshake. It also does what? A negotiate encryption algorithm. So an encryption algorithm. Remember the encryption algorithm I've told you has a bunch of random uh, uh, letters or random um, letters and, and, and numbers and stuff like that. All right. So it's negotiating. Okay. It's trying to figure out. All right, so which how we're we gonna use this? How we're we gonna uh, how we're we gonna create this and what is it gonna look like, right? And it's an encryption algorithm, you know what I'm saying? So it's just a bunch of scramble uh, words and letters and numbers and whatever else it puts up there uh, to make sure that keeps your HTTPS, you know, secure. It makes sure it keeps your all your transmissions secure, right? Your data exchanges, your your information. Um, you communicating to your family and friends and your business transactions, okay? And other parameters for secure connection. And then let's go to encryption. Oh, see, I knew it was going to talk about it. I knew it was going to talk about it. So encryption. And we're glad it's talking about it. Encryption. Once the secure connection is established, data is encrypted using the agreed upon algorithm and can be transmitted securely between the client and server. When building internet-based applications and services, it's important to understand how SSL slash TLS works and to ensure that your <clears throat> application is designed to use SSL slash TLS, TLS when transmitting sensitive data such as login credentials, payment information, and other personal data. You also need to ensure that you obtain and maintain valid SSL slash TLS certificates for your servers and that you follow best practices for configuring and securing your SSL slash TLS connections. By doing so, you can help protect your users' data and ensure the integrity and confidentiality of your application's communication over the Internet. The Future Emerging Trends and Technologies The Internet is constantly evolving. And new technologies and trends are emerging all the time. As a developer, it's important to stay up to date with the latest developments in order to build innovative and effective applications and services. Here are some of the emerging trends and technologies that are shaping the future of the Internet. 5G. 5G is the latest generation of mobile network technology, offering faster speeds, lower latency, and greater capacity than previous generation. It is expected to enable new use Cases and applications such as autonomous vehicles and remote surgery. Whoa. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, let's keep going. Internet of Things, IoT. IoT refers to the network of physical devices, the one that you have in your hand right now or the one that you're on your computer, tablet, notebook, whatever it is that you want to call it, Chromebook. And this is a physical device and it's considered an IoT. So IoT refers to, net to the network. Of physical devices it's the network of physical devices vehicles home appliances and other objects that are connected to what the internet so uh, and can exchange data as IOT continues to grow it is expected to revolutionize industries such as healthcare transportation and manufacturing mm -hmm. artificial intelligence AI AI technologies such as machine learning and natural language pro processing are already being used to power a wide range of applications and services from voice assistance to fraud detection as ai continues to advance it is expected to enable new use uh, cases and transform industries such as healthcare finance and education blockchain blockchain is a distributed ledger technology that enables secure decentralized transactions it is being used to power a wide range of applications from cryptocurrency to supply chain management. Edge computing. Edge computing refers to the processing and storage of data at the edge of the network rather than in centralized data centers. It is expected to enable new use cases and applications such as real-time analytics and low latency applications. By staying up to date with these and other emerging trends and technologies, you can ensure that your applications and services are built to take advantage of the latest capabilities and offer the best possible experience for your users. Now we have the conclusion and hey guys, it was nice reading with you all. Nice for you guys to come join and listen and to read along while we talk about how does the internet work. But here is the conclusion and this is how we're going to end this and we're going to end this with a bang.
All right, so conclusion. And that brings us to the end of this article. We've covered a lot of ground, so let's take a moment to review what we've learned. The internet is a global network of interconnected computers that uses a standard set of communication protocols to exchange data. The internet works by connecting devices and computer systems together using standardized protocols such as IP mm -hmm, and TCP. Mm -hmm. The core of the internet is a global network of interconnected routers that direct traffic between different devices and systems. Basic concepts and terminology that you need to familiarize yourself with include packets, routers, IP addresses, domain names, DNS, HTTP, HTTPS, and SSL slash TLS. Protocols play a critical role in enabling communication and data exchange over the internet, allowing devices and systems from different manufacturers and vendors to communicate seamlessly. I hope you found this article useful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Thanks for reading, and thank you guys for chiming in and listening and following along as we read how does the internet work we will see you on the next video you guys enjoy the rest of your time peace